morning, everybody. Uh, we're here today to announce that the Office of the Attorney General is launching an investigation into Juul Laboratories, and in particular focusing on their smoking cessation claims um, that we think are likely unfounded and unapproved by the FDA that Juul is primarily a smoking cessation tool designed to help you stop smoking, uh, and also a focus on their promotional and marketing efforts. Connecticut is today taking aggressive action to protect children and families across Connecticut and across this country. Protection against products and marketing efforts that may be designed and targeted for children and that may be intended not to help you stop smoking, but to produce dependency and addiction. So I don't have to tell you that this is a very serious problem here in Connecticut and across the country. We know that now, based on statistics, uh, one in five high schoolers in America are now vaping. And they're mostly juuling because Juul controls somewhere between 70, 80, 90 percent of the market. We know that middle schoolers are also one in 20 middle schoolers are now vaping 5% and rising. We have some statistics that in 2017 to 2018, there was a 78% increase in the number of high school students vaping and a 55% increase in the number of middle schoolers. Millions of American high schoolers and middle schoolers now vaping in school, in class, in school bathrooms. And I don't think it is an overstatement to say that this has become an epidemic. Here in Connecticut, Connecticut suspensions and expulsions related to vaping increased sixfold from 349 back in 2016 to 2,160 expulsions and suspensions in the 2017 to 2018 time period. Yale University here in Connecticut just released a study that demonstrates that vaping just doesn't involve a uh, liquid, salt-based liquid that carries nicotine, that it may also carry heavy metals and, and other um, pollutants and, and noxious chemicals and things that are not good for you um, that can inflame um, um, your body and your lungs uh, and are, are increasingly known to be unhealthy, including nickel, tin, lead, and other potential carcinogens. A recent article um, I read, I think, really brought it home. In Connecticut, we heard about a young woman, a Yukon freshman, who started vaping as a sophomore in high school. And she's tried to quit, but she can't. And she said, my body felt like it had been hit by a train. And when she didn't, have access to her vape. After one hour, I started craving it. After two hours, I feel really sick and nauseous, like I'm on a crazy roller coaster, anxious and cranky. My body feels like I need it. A Westbrook High School junior, Kendall Orlowski, said, this is the biggest problem in our school. It's more of a problem than alcohol. Let me say that. All of us, I think, know how serious a problem this is, particularly those of us who are parents of small children. So I have a 13-year-old, an 11-year-old, and an 8-year-old in my house. And just a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of kids over for dinner. Uh, my 13-year-old had her best friend in Stanford over. And we were just talking about what's happening in school. We talked about. Um, you know, great things happening in school, the school play, sports, and we also talked about some of the challenges in school and some of the bad behaviors. And it was clear, story after story, that the biggest problem in middle school, one of the biggest problems in middle school in Stanford, Connecticut, is the outbreak and epidemic of vaping, and that it happens everywhere, it's constant, and everyone's doing it. And for me, that really brought it home. And I think it um, hits home for a lot of us here uh, in Connecticut. So the focus of our investigation 
um, is really outlined in a May 2019 letter uh, by six organizations. The American Academy of Pediatrics, the Cancer Action Network of the American Cancer Society, the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, and the Truth Initiative, Inspiring Tobacco-Free Lives. We have copies of that letter written by these six organizations on May 9, 2019 to the Acting Commissioner of the FDA. And in short, this letter outlines two critical areas of focus, and they call on the FDA to investigate two key issues. One, Juul's claim that it is a smoking cessation device. Now, if it's a smoking cessation device, under federal law and the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, they have to be approved by the FDA. Now, what's interesting is we've heard over and over again that Juul is an alternative to smoking and it's a smoking cessation device. On the other hand, they also make claims that it's not a smoking cessation device and that it's really for, quote unquote, switching. Well, that's why we need to investigate. Which is it? Are you a smoking cessation device or are you not a smoking cessation device? I think it's pretty clear to all of us what they mean. And if I could ask you to step aside for a second, Commissioner. Juul's ads make the claim over and over again that Juul is designed to help you stop smoking. For example, this ad says, quit, start smoking again, quit, start smoking again. It talks about the cycle of people who try to quit and they start smoking again. And then it says, switch. The average smoker tries to quit 30 times, make the switch. What message is that sending? You can use the word switch. You can use the word change. We all know what you're trying to say, that Juul can help you stop smoking. This other ad, it's a smart, really well thought out alternative to smoking. 34 million Americans still smoke cigarettes make the switch. And then in their mission statement, it says that Juul can improve the lives of the world's one billion adult smokers by eliminating cigarettes. Finally, I want to draw your attention to Juul.com. And right under that, that ad there, they state their mission and their story. Juul Labs was founded by former smokers, James and Adam, with the goal of improving the lives of the world's one billion adult smokers by eliminating cigarettes. We envision a world where fewer people use cigarettes and where people who smoke cigarettes have the tools to reduce or eliminate their consumption entirely should they so desire. I think it's pretty cl clear to all of us what Juul is saying. They are saying emphatically that Juul can help you stop smoking and that it's a smoking cessation device, but they are not approved by the FDA, and they've never been approved by the FDA to provide Juul as a smoking cessation device, and that is unlawful and against our nation's food and drug laws. And so that's why we are commencing this investigation today to understand what claims they're making. If they're making claim that Juul is a smoking cessation device, is that claim deceptive and misleading? And if they're making a claim uh, that Juul is not a smoking cessation device, well then that in and of itself is deceptive and misleading because it's not clear what they're saying. And that's why we're focused uh, on this claim and also their promotional and marketing efforts. So these six organizations, the leading anti-smoking organizations and heart and lung uh, organizations in this country have laid out for the FDA um, these two issues, they've called for an investigation about the smoking cessation claims and about their promotional efforts. They're asking the FDA to take action. We're not waiting on the federal government. Connecticut is taking action today. We are launching civil investigative demands, essentially subpoenas, asking for information from Juul uh, about these claims and marketing efforts so we can get to the bottom of this and protect Connecticut's children uh, and our families. So thank you all for being here today. I've got a lot of paper here. Let me recognize, in our new office, we're gonna have like a little podium and a table. 
Uh, let me recognize our guests here today, uh, a number of whom are going to be speaking. I'm joined by Michelle Siegel, the Commissioner of the Department of Consumer Protection. We're going to hear from Commissioner Siegel in a second. Uh, Miriam Delphin Rittman, the Connecticut Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services Commissioner. Patricia Raymer, President of the Hartford Healthcare Behavioral Health Network. Barbara Walsh of the Tobacco Control Program from the Department of Public Health and my good friend and colleague, State Representative Kristen mccarthy Vehi. I also want to uh, recognize Bright Johnson of the American Cancer Society, James Williams of the American Heart Association, Ruth Canovi of the American Lung Association. And if you ever wondered whether it makes any difference to call your state rep or state senator or your attorney general and to be a pain in the neck, uh, and ask them to have coffee, in this case it was Fairfield, uh, you don't have to wonder anymore, look no further than Nancy Lefkowitz, who more than a year ago uh, asked me to have coffee and um, laid out for me uh, how really damaging uh, the epidemic of vaping and juuling is in Fairfield, Connecticut and uh, across our communities in southwestern Connecticut, how it's impacted her family. Um, and it's because Nancy uh, directed my attention to this issue that we've spent the last year gearing up for and preparing uh, for this investigation. I also want to thank Amor Rosario, Heather Wilson, Jonathan Blake, Michael Wertheimer, and Joe Chambers of the Office of the Attorney General. Also, Joe Rubin, who's not here today. Joe led this office's efforts on the tobacco case and tobacco settlement. He is now leading our efforts uh, on Juul, I can't tell you how valuable it is to have somebody who's been through the biggest public health fight in our nation's history against tobacco now leading the way on this. And so with that, I'm happy to take questions in a few minutes, but let me turn it over to Commissioner Siegel. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good morning. So I'm Michelle Siegel, Commissioner for the Department of Consumer Protection. And a big part of our mission is to protect public health and safety. And um, you know, obviously the Attorney General really clearly and I think eloquently laid out the health implications of these products, particularly for people who are younger. In fact, Connecticut recently raised the smoking age. It's going up from 18 to 21 shortly in recognition of the fact that there are health consequences to all of these products. Um, and we're still learning more and more about them as the Yale study that came out reveals. There's, it, there's still a lot we don't know, but we, we know there's some health effects from these products. And so it's really important to us uh, to understand how are these products being marketed, who are they being marketed to, what are the claims that are being made, because to the extent you're also driving people towards these products and these choices in a way where they feel they've been misled or they have a different expectation, that's certainly of concern. So we're really pleased to be supporting and working with the Attorney General um, as he opens this investigation and looks into um, what's going on with, in this situation. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Commissioner Miriam Delphin Rittman. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being here, Commissioner. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for your leadership on this important issue. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and, and glad that everyone is, is here to, to uh, uh, be part of this important conversation. Um, we know that the use of electronic nicotine delivery devices, or ENDS, they're called, uh, continue to be a grow growing problem not only in Connecticut but across the country. Uh, many people have misperceptions about these devices and, and believe that they're safe alternatives uh, to cigarettes. And even though the dual devices have been touted as a uh, replacement for tobacco sensation, we know, as, as Attorney General Tong mentioned, uh, they've not been approved by the FDA. Um, the truth is that most of these e-cigarettes contain almost 20 times, uh, 20 times the nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. And so we know that they're highly addictive. Uh, in our state, e-cigarettes among youth uh, has actually has exploded. So the use, use among young people has exploded. Uh, the dual small size and appealing flavors like bubble gum and fruity flavors and, and other flavors that appeal to young people um, have made them very popular, uh, especially among uh, adolescents. Uh, today, these deep devices can be easily purchased at convenience stores, online, uh, and so the access is, is, is uh, they're highly accessible for young folks. Uh, the Department of Public Health in 2017 Youth Tobacco Study indicates the e-cigarette use has more than doubled like, among Connecticut high school students 
from 7.2% in 2015 to 14.7% in 2017. Uh, the increase in the use of e-cigarettes is, is a primary factor contributing to the overall use increase of tobacco-related products by middle, middle school and high school students across Connecticut, um, and we're seeing this across the country, as I mentioned. Um, as Attorney General Tong mentioned, a recent Yale study conducted at, the, at Connecticut schools found that mi minors who initiate e-cigarette uses are seven times more likely uh, to, to begin to use other tobacco products. Other studies have found similar results, and the Department of Education uh, study found that young people who use e-cigarettes are six times more likely uh, to be involved in disciplinary actions, and so that's a concern as well. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, this past legislative session, uh, uh, Connecticut passed Tobacco 21, a law which will require individuals to be at least 21 years of age to use tobacco products and e-cigarettes and other vaping products. Um, over the years, our, start, our state has made tremendous strides in preventing and reducing tobacco use. It's important that we continue to work together and educate our residents about the potential dangers of e-cigarette use, including potential addiction to nicotine, exposure to harmful substances, and the likelihood of, of uh, other substances within other tobacco products. Ensuring that manufacturers market their e-products honestly and responsibly is one step towards continuing our progress to reducing e-cigarette and tobacco use and resulting essentially in a healthier Connecticut. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia Raymer, president of the Hartford Healthcare Behavioral Health Network. So as happens at these things, people have already said all the facts that I was going to oh, say. Okay. But I'll say two things. Nancy reminded me actually that um, I was just saying the ex uh, suspensions have gone up exponentially both in middle school and high school related to kids using this product. And as we always say, you can't arrest yourself out of a crisis, nor can you suspend kids out of a crisis. This is an addiction like anything else, and we have to treat it like that. The most important fact that I like to try and get out there is if we can keep our kids from using any substance, including Juul, nicotine, marijuana, any substance before the age of 18, even if you're genetically loaded, and again, it's a medical disease, so genetics plays a component, your child stands a 95% better chance of not getting addicted to any substance. It's an incredible fact, one I wish I knew when my kids was growing up. If you can keep them to 21, again, even if they're genetically loaded, chances of them becoming addicted later in life is really decreased almost completely. So keep your kids from using any substance, and Juul is a very, very, uh, it's, a ver it's a substance that's very seductive to our kids, right? So please, please educate your kids around this as well as other substances. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Walsh, Department of Public Health. Hi, so besides the youth uh, epidemic that we are uh, trying to argue, um, the uh, adult smokers that we have done focus group with, groups with in Connecticut um, that are trying to switch or have tried to switch from cigarettes to e-cigarettes find um, that it doesn't necessarily do it for them, so they end up using both products. And what we have seen through, uh, we do run the tobacco use cessation telephone quit line, which has um, both phone, online, and uh, text messaging programs for anybody interested, um, they're finding uh, that the smokers are having more difficulty quitting because they are using both um, devices. And uh, so far, we have had uh, difficulty with youth cessation because there really isn't evidence-based youth cessation programs for us to run. So um, it's been a challenge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Representative McCarthy Baby. Thank you so much to the Attorney General for your leadership on this and the partnership with so many agencies like the Lung Association, the Heart Association, and the Cancer Society. I come here today with three hats. I am a state representative, as the Attorney General said. I am the co-chair of our local prevention council, Fairfield Cares, our community resource for healthy cho choices, and I'm a mom. And we worked very hard this session to raise the age to, of tobacco use to 21, which is a great success because the statistic that was just mentioned is so important. And we've heard a lot of statistics, but I want to tell you a couple quick anecdotes from my community. A few years back, one of our headmasters from the high school came to our coalition 
and said, we have an epidemic going on and we need your help. And no one knew what to do. Last year, when I went before the Public Health Committee and testified and told them about what was happening and what our young people on our youth committee were telling us, people were surprised. I'm so happy to know that so many of the leaders in the state who have known about this issue and now so many of my fellow lawmakers understand the danger that Juul and other electronic nicotine delivery devices pose. Many parents don't even know that there is nicotine in a Juul product. They think that it's safe. The message that I hope to get out to parents and young people, of course, which is what my focus has been, is this isn't safe for young people and we absolutely want to keep them from using. But we hear more and more that we're not sure how safe this is for anyone. And when I testified before committees this year, I talked about the fact that Big Tobacco's investment in a one-third share in this company, you generally don't spend billions of dollars investing when you're trying to get people to stop using your product. So I'm really thrilled that our Attorney General is helping to lead this effort and that I have the opportunity to work together with so many incredible leaders and local activists like Nancy Lefkowitz to help make sure that we can put an end to unsafe practices and make sure that products are being used for what they're intended for being used for. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Can you talk to any other states you plan on them following suit, or do you think they'll yeah. follow suit? So North Carolina has already commenced suit against Juul. Um, their focus is on marketing practices, uh, in particular youth targeted marketing practices. Uh, my good friend Maura Healy in Massachusetts has also launched an investigation and has filed suit against another uh, vapor e-cigarette maker. So we're in, and, and there are a number of other AGs uh, with whom I'm in close contact and coordination and their staffs on this issue. So um, we're the, the latest shoe to drop, but I think that there's gonna be more action across the country on this issue. And, um, uh, and the members of my team that I mentioned before are uh, in constant communication with teams in other states. So yes, it's a nationwide effort. Yeah, I think that, look, we're in the investigative stage and um, we want to get to the bottom of these claims about smoking cessation because, let's be clear, this is their whole rationale, right? This is their excuse when people say, hey, you're, you're marketing to kids or you're promoting dependency or addiction. Um, they're saying, no, 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 this is about helping people, quote unquote, switch. And, and they're making the claim that they're helping people quit smoking. And so we're testing that claim. If that's your main explanation, your excuse, we'd like to know whether it's true or not. Uh, and so far, the FDA has not approved them uh, for Juul for use as a smoking cessation tool. So that's why we're digging into this, uh, this issue in particular. We're gonna be sharing information with our sister states. They're gonna be sharing information with us. Uh, this is a team effort, as it often is. I hope so. I hope so. And, you know, we're, we're ready to work with our federal partners. I know that the FDA has done some work on this, um, but we can't wait. You know, you, you heard the statistics, a 78% increase among high schoolers, one in five to one in four high schoolers in America, depending on what study you look at. Middle schoolers, right? I mean, 12, 13, 11, these are kids, and they're vaping. Um, they're essentially smoking, in my view, uh, but they're vaping in class. It's undetectable, little devices that look like USB drives, um, and, and it's clear you talk to any middle school student, any high school student, anywhere. I, I doubt you'll find anyone who doesn't know what vaping is or who won't acknowledge that it's a huge problem in their school. It's a, it's a combination, um, but our focus on the marketing practices and whether they are misleading or deceptive is really at the core of the Attorney General's consumer protection powers. And it's, 
the basis upon which we do a lot of our consumer protection work. It was the basis upon which we did our tobacco work uh, and our generic drug price fixing work is both antitrust and consumer protection work uh, and our opioids work. So all of this has a common thread uh, in that it focuses on uh, misleading and deceptive practices uh, in their marketing and in their sales efforts. Sure. I mean, they're subject to regulation in the laws of the state of Connecticut and our 49 sister states, but also the federal government. It's pretty clear on that under federal law, um, if you're making the claim that you are a medical device, that you can provide uh, a product or a service that can provide treatment for a medical condition or disease, um, that you have to be approved by the FDA. That's, that's just common sense, and, and that's just basic first day of law school black letter law, okay? And so that's what Juul's saying. You know, they're saying that Juul is a medical device, that it is a smoking cessation device, that we can help you with the disease of addiction to cigarettes. That's what all this says. And they have not been approved for that purpose. That in and of itself on its face is not lawful. We're asking for documents related not just to their smoking cessation claims, uh, but the documents that back up those claims. And also, um, Juul's engaged in a number of targeted promotional efforts. We've read about, um, they have an enterprise solutions department now, which is a fancy way of saying they're targeting programs, institutions, companies. And so they're going to, uh, they're going to companies and saying, we can help your employees uh, quit smoking. Um, and, and they're going to other institutions and saying, we can provide a program that can help the people uh, in your company, your school, your university quit smoking. We want to know about those promotional programs and how they're targeting people and their claims. And again, at the end of the day, uh, Representative McCarthy may he made a, a very good point, which is um, there's billions of dollars uh, being invested in this company, billions of dollars, including a huge investment by Altria, the former Philip Morris. And they're putting billions of dollars into this company because they know that this company has an extraordinary runway to increase their sales and to broaden um, a crisis of addiction and dependency because that's how you make money in this business. And, and we want to understand what their strategy is and how they're going to go about it and do our very best to stop it. Any more questions? John, you're quiet today. <laughs> All right, thank you so much.